afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I believe this is a complex topic, um, talking about uh, headless CMS. Uh, but before I begin, I just want to ask uh, how many of the audience know headless architecture or headless CMS? Uh, one. Anybody else? Okay, so I have a good audience. <laughs> um, so like I said, it's a complex topic and uh, uh, largely uh, this is, you know, uh, in the hand of IT folks in the company. Uh, uh, but surprisingly, the decision makers are marketing people. Um, DigitUp is now, you know, six year old organization. And I've come across many brands, uh, B2B, D2C brands, and I've often asked this question, uh, do you know headless CMS or, you know, what is headless architecture? Uh, you know, what's your content marketing strategy, how you're delivering content? Uh, uh, they haven't heard of this term. Uh, so that's the reason uh, I want to present uh, this particular topic. And uh, we'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit complex. So I'm sure uh, it's mainly definitions. Uh, I'm sure most, what is, what is content management system? I'm sure most of uh, the audience over here know what is WordPress, what is Shopify. Uh, but just again, if uh, people who know Shopify or WordPress can kindly raise their hands. Uh, so yeah, many of them, right? So what you have in basically in a WordPress or in a Shopify, you have on the left side of the screen, also on the Shopify, your content management system for your website, where you, where you manage your post, your media, your pages, your comments, appearance, plugins, etc., etc. While in case of Shopify D2C, it's orders, products. Yeah, WordPress is more general, so you can also have a B2B website, but in case of Shopify, it's only towards D2C. Uh, you have your analytics, customers, marketing, etc., etc. Right? And what all it comes with is it's a theme based. So basically, you have to choose a theme before you're, you, you're going to make live a website. And that theme comes with sections and pages and the code all in built for you. And the other things that you have in this content management system uh, is checkout, cart, shipping, inventory, discounts, whatever you want to manage. And plugins are uh, synonymous to integrations. Uh, this is a theme-based approach. Uh, uh, the typical content management system which has been serving uh, billions of websites across the globe. Uh, however, there has been a change uh, back in uh, starting 20. 2010, 2013, and uh, uh, most of the big brands have moved on to headless CMS, and that's what we're going to talk about. So l before we move on to that, let's understand what are the problems with this legacy way of creating websites. So the challenges with, with traditional CMS is, number one is the theme, because it's a theme-based web, uh, uh, you know, uh, website. You have to choose the theme in advance, which essentially means you have one kind of page for one kind of scenario. So you have home page, one type, product page, one type. Once you have chosen the theme, then you have to stick with it and, and that's how it remains. So, you know, marketing, it requires creativity, it requires uh, continuous change, it requires testing, it requires research. So from that end point, th that's a huge limitation. This, then the sections of different, you know, page cannot be interchanged. So if you have, if you have a section, you can make it up and down uh, within a page but you can't interchange it. So if you, there is a section on another page that you like and you want to move to the, to the home page section, you won't be able to do it unless you have to, you know, trickle with the code. Uh, the other areas are that there is no version control. So you have this content management system, uh, but if you have various versions of, uh, let's suppose your home page or maybe a blog page, et cetera, et cetera, there is no version system. Um, and then there are, there are a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, with regard to that and uh, multi-language ability, content reuse, website speed, you know, higher total cost of ownership, uh, multi-country approach is very difficult. So, uh, you know, what was the alternative for this previously? Uh, uh, PHP Laravel is the, is one very common herd framework uh, brands have chosen when they're looking for some flexibility. Uh, that means they don't want to go with Shopify, they don't want to go with with uh, with WordPress, so they would go with that because then somebody would create basically you know uh, uh, 
uh, web development agency would create a backend content management system, uh, basically something like this, backend on PHP. Uh, and that would be, uh, you know, a one big headache as well. Uh, and then the front end will be in Laravel, etc. So, uh, what's the solution? So, what is headless? Uh, headless CMS, as the name implies, was given by Dirk Horing, uh, who was the CEO of, uh, who is the CEO of Commerce Tools, and coined the term headless commerce in 2013. Uh, basically, why he called it headless because uh, he considered this as a body, and he wanted to to uh, separate uh, the front end, which is basically the theme, from the back end, basically from checkout, cart, ship, shipment, inventory, and discounts. That's called back end. So here you have the back end, which is separate, CMS, which is a content management system, and then you have your front end. Uh, these are all interconnected with APIs. Now, what happens because of that? The one thing is that if you see, it's the front end is is made based on component based uh, system. That means your styling, font, functionality, CTA sections is you you're making every atom of your website. Now it doesn't really matter what's your home page like, what's your blog page like. You just create all your components, and and then you you create your sections and your uh, you know different atoms within the CMS. And then you have an entire flexibility on how you want to create the page, how you want to, uh, you know, juggle with your sections, how you want to present a particular uh, aspect. On top of that, if you are having integrations, because everything is API driven, so normally you would see that uh, uh, in today's world, uh, every new feature, there is a new startup, there is a new best of breed technologies are coming. And, and one would like to leverage them. So there is, a, there is a solution for each and everything. There is, a, there is a startup for checkout, for cart, for shipment, for inventory, for discounts, right? And you want to have the best of the technologies which are available in the market to utilize for your D2C or your B2B websites. Now you can do that very efficiently in, in, a, in a CMS while in, in case of the traditional CMS, you would you know, have the plugin or have someone do an expensive uh, integration for you. So those are the other areas, and then if you have the integrations, if you have the plugin, let's suppose in, in a traditional CMS, it will come in come in its own predefined format. While in case of a in case of a headless CMS, you, if you do the integrations, you have the ability to customize the front end as you would like to, uh, you know, achieve it. Though uh, uh, as as uh, 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 what's the impact of of these aspect is a very, very strong aspect. The number one is efficient management of brand and entity. Now, this is the one single most important element that I personally see with several brands that are struggling with that, uh, uh, not entirely because of if they are using, uh, you know, WordPress or Shopify, but because uh, as the team is growing, as the, if they have a large number of products, um, it becomes very difficult to, to, to control, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, brand uh, identity uh, is being published uh, and how it is being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, communicated to the audience, it becomes very uh, difficult. But if, if, if you're following a proper content management system, uh, if you're having a proper brand, brand identity, then the content management system sort of help you maintain that brand identity through its various uh, uh, you know, tools and techniques that are built into it. So it enables you to microservices uh, architecture. Now, what is microservices architecture, which I just explained? You know, these days there are best of breed technologies available and uh, uh, headless CMS or headless uh, architecture is a subset of microservices uh, architecture. Uh, it allows you to use the best of breed of technologies. Now, this is very important. Uh, uh, there have been brands who are constantly changing. Now, Shopify has become a de facto, um, you know, uh, the CMS for uh, D2C. However, a lot of brands are struggling when they have a large number of products, maybe ranging to, uh, you know, uh, 800, 900 products. Uh, they simply can't manage the, 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 uh, the content uh, uh, within uh, the, the, uh, the Shopify. Even Shopify has come with Shopify headless. Uh, and then there are other like Webflow, Wix, etc., etc. 
uh, the microservices architecture means you are using each and every microservices. You are using some, uh, some payment integration, you are using some uh, uh, search uh, technology, you are using some personalization technology, etc., etc. So you want to keep on attaching those technologies so that you can reach better to your audience. And in order to do that, you need to choose an API first technology. And that is headless CMS. The scalability, of course, easy to research, POC, A-B testing, and custom AI features enables omni-channel content marketing and improved user experience, of course. Uh, selection of content management system, uh, some of the content management is, is an example. I'm not promoting them, but uh, just if some of you have heard and you would like to know more, that you can read and understand those. Uh, attribute for selection is you have to look at enterprise cost, uh, migration from traditional, that means if you're migrating to the next one, how you want to do around that, yeah, integrated digital asset management, if it is integrated, not integrated, you need to take another uh, uh, digital asset management system. Uh, this is another one which is also kind of a headless digital asset management system where, where the brands uh, needs to have their assets at one place. Uh, uh, normally what is happening, there is an asset which is lying in somebody's computer or here and there, there is an asset for website, there is an asset for Instagram, there is an asset for social media, etc., etc. But you have, a, if you have a, uh, a, a API first driven, uh, I would say headless, uh, you know, digital asset management, you can have it at one place and connected it to all your various touch points. Uh, so just uh, ending with, we have done one such uh, huge, uh, uh, you know, architecture. Um, development for Liptin T back in 2022, where we did their 40 plus websites migrated within a year on microservices architecture, and uh, they had you know delivered good on performance since last three years. They're continuing, and before this, uh, some of them are D2C brands within this, and who have changed their uh, architecture at least two times before, and with this, they saved a lot of money as well as uh, 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 gave them the future fit. Uh, technology where they can continue to evolve as they as they need instead of you know taking out the entire piece of technology as far as their website is concerned so yeah thank you